Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Penovich here. Okay, we're going to solely focus on Edalia today. Edalia is definitely the one storm we're going to focus on just because everyone's talking about it. But I will hint a little bit at the flooding risk for the Carolinas because of the stall front because they are now all kind of a little bit connected. So let's get right into it. Just an amazing satellite image this morning. It leaves you speechless when you see two very distinct tropical systems, hurricanes at that near the southeastern U.S. I'm going to turn the radar on briefly here just so you can see the radar around Edalia because it is close enough to pick up the radar and it shows you there is a clear defined eye even though it doesn't look like that on the satellite image. This is Franklin obviously getting a little weaker believe it or not but it was borderline cat five yesterday. Um, it's a buzzsaw. I mean the circulation around it. I mean you can even see some of these clouds wrapping all the way around perfectly symmetrical that's that's a healthy tropical system. That's why when you look at Adelia this morning, it looks much healthier. What do I mean by healthier? Well, you could see the banding features have wrapped around the west side. We've got this big band on the east side. The outflow is expanding in this direction, um, expanding in this direction. So it's much more symmetrical. The more symmetrical or even shaped the storm is, uh, the stronger it is. You can see on the visible, we're not seeing that eye yet, but it's clearly there on the radar. So if there's the center right there, seeing some spiral rain bands moving north and over the Carolinas, not to be left out, even though these systems aren't directly impacting us, we've got stalled fronts and we've got a mess of rain and more storms, so likely more flooding today. Let me quickly show you the tracks of these two systems. I will turn off the satellite image here just briefly there um, to make it a little bit easier, but this is the track moving towards the Big Bend area of Florida um, early on Wednesday morning and then moving up here and We'll get into this, maybe stalling off the East Coast. Um, there's the track for Franklin long gone. So what is steering all this? Well, there's actually some pretty clear evidence on what's going on here. When we look at the water vapor loop here. Um, you see this trough digging in here over the US. We've got high pressure over here. This flow of air is like this. So it's picking up Edalia and the high pressure is helping to push. What's interesting, why we're seeing the stall possibly off the coast here, is this picks it up but then moves out and then leaves it behind. Now, I'm going to show you some of the ensemble data, which I like showing. I'm going to move my head up here just, just out of the way. But this is always a really good graphic that Tom puts together here. I'm going to move the, the map up here so it's just a little bit easier to see. There we go. Um, so these are all of the models, and you know, not just one single model. We call it an ensemble. So you can see the, the, the trend has been very tight here. We've got good data now. But offshore, you see this mess out here, right? People go, what is going on there? Is it going to recurve? When you see that in the model guidance, that is the model telling you the, the steering currents are weak. Basically, there's nothing moving the storm. So you get erratic looking formations on the model guidance. So for all these like loops back, that's really probably not going to happen. It's probably must as, just likely that's going to happen. What it's really telling you is that it doesn't know. <laughs> it's going to be meandering out there. So there's a chance it could stall offshore. Now, how far that happens, it looks pretty far. Um, and if it does happen, it would be a really weak system as well. So it's not something I would be super, super concerned about right now. But that's down the road. It's still got a ways to go before we get there. Let's focus on the immediate thing because this this is moving over very warm water today and is going to intensify rapidly. How do we know that? Well, we're already seeing signs of it in the satellite imagery and the upper level flow, now that it's symmetrical, that flow from the trough and the high pressure system is venting it. It's getting vented to the south and the water here is some of the water, uh, warmest water in the entire Atlantic. So just how warm is that water? It's ridiculous. It's 90 degrees and it's deep warm water. In fact, it gets warmer as it gets closer to the coast. So that's a bad sign for rapid intensification. You tend to see these things really crank up as they get closer and closer to the coast. That warm water, especially up here, I mean, it gets hot, hot, hot up here. It's moving towards the coast and it's getting stronger. It's pushing boatloads of water towards the coast. So the storm surge on the coast is going to be ridiculous. And in that vein, I want to show you some of the data here. I'm going to kind of move, move the graphics so you can see it a little bit better. I move my head here. Let me go in and kind of show you the amount of water that's going to be pushed towards the coast from Tampa Bay all the way north. Now, again, the track is there, but look at the water. The water is pushed over a big area. So people focus on the center. It could be anywhere in there, 
in between the cone, but look how big the water puts. It's a bulldozer. It's pushing water. That water gets pushed into areas of Cedar Key. I mean, you're talking over on the right here. That's over 10 feet of water in the red. Um, even in Tampa Bay, six, seven feet of water getting pushed into the bay. And then emerges off the southeast coast, and we've got big water in Savannah, Tybee Island, up to Charleston, and even the Grand Strand. Don't let your guard down there. We could see some significant water push as well. So the water is the story with this system, and it is going to push a whole bunch of that to the north and east. In fact, let me show you all these storm surge products. So this is the most up-to-date storm surge product. You can see, you know, 8 to 12 feet in that area in red. But look how big the area is impacted by the surge. This is why, I mean, I, I'll preach this again and again and again. Ian was a horrible situation last year, and people just don't didn't take this seriously enough, or they thought they had to be in the cone or near the cone, and it doesn't matter. I just, if we could reiterate one thing over and over again, the cone is where the center of the storm is. It is not where the impacts are. OK, it's like tracking a Mack truck and everybody's focused on where the hood ornament is and not where the entire car is or the truck. OK, so imagine going, oh, I'm not going to be hit by the hood ornament of this Mack truck. But, yeah, you're going to be hit by the right side or left side or the wheels. It's still going to get you. It's the whole thing you've got to focus on, not one little point in the middle of the vehicle or in this case, the point in the middle of the storm. It's the whole storm, which is several hundred miles wide. So. You want to be really focused on where these impacts are highest. Yes, they do shift based on where that center goes, but not as much as you might think, especially if you're on the right side or east side. So for everybody who, who watches in Florida, you know, if this shifts a little bit further north, it doesn't change this that dramatically. It has to shift like all the way up here for you to get into the three foot storm surge. It, it, it shifting to the north isn't going to get you out of the three to five foot storm surge. And then we see it moving up towards the Carolina coast and storm surge two to four. This is on top of the astronomical high tides. Full moon is tomorrow, okay? It's a perigee full moon or what people jokingly call the super moon. It's the closest the moon is to the earth. The gravitational pull of the moon makes the tides higher. So even if this storm wasn't here, we would have flooding on the coast, likely some minor flooding, especially in low lying areas and definitely in Charleston because of the king tides. But you put that on top of storm surge and waves and swells from these tropical storms and hurricanes, you're going to get really high water. So that's that's the storm moving in. Let's take a look at the wind speeds because we've got a pretty good wind swath here. People always ask about the winds. This intensifying, that Big Bend area of Florida right there. Let me see. I'm going to zoom in on Florida. Um, we'll go into the North Florida. So you can see these winds right here. Let me move this out of the way. You're getting in 80, 90, 100 mile an hour winds moving across northern florida let's go into georgia here show you southern georgia it's moving across southern georgia then we'll go into south carolina and you can see the winds mainly offshore and then we'll go into north carolina here so that's the wind speed off the north carolina coast so you know it pushes out there okay so let's talk about this stall of the loop because i'm going to get tons of questions about this i know from from people here in the Carolinas. We'll get into that. All right, so let's get into the question I've already gotten asked. Is it going to loop back, Brad? Is it going to come back at us? Okay, these are all, I, they're valid questions. Don't get me wrong, but people overread these spaghetti plots and overread guidance. Um, as I mentioned at the start of this video, um, these are tightly clustered, right? All the way till here, and then they start spreading out. Initially, we had a bunch of these going out to sea. Some are going here, but yes, some are coming back this direction. So immediately, everyone ignores these and goes, look, it's coming back towards Florida. No, it's not. If they all were aimed back towards Florida, I'd be with you, okay? When I see them do this and spread, and by the way, some of the ones yesterday had it going all the way back here like this. They've already kind of gone away from that. What this is, and this is how, this is how you have to be kind of know know what you're looking at here. Um, just because you can use or see the tools doesn't need, mean you know how to use them. This is a sign that the guidance is telling you something. It's telling you it doesn't know. Okay, it's telling you the steering currents are weak, and kind of like a cork or a boat going into a calm lake, it's just going to drift. And if you run a model, maybe one model would take that boat this direction, another model would take it that direction. They're all telling you. It's random, right? It's a randomization of it, it. The steering currents are weak here. So what does that mean? Well, remember, here, here's a look at the systems. I'm going to point them out to you. We'll stop it right here. I don't want to go too far. 
So there, there is Franklin right there. You could see it right there. I'm gonna actually change the color of my my pencil here so you can see a little bit better. We'll do a yellow. Maybe let's do black. It might be easier to see. So here, here's our Franklin. There's Edelia. This is the trough. See this dip in the jet stream? Here's the high pressure right there. Okay, this is the high. You see the flow around it. That's curving that way. This trough's going like this way. So right. So immediately Franklin gets picked up because it's getting the squeeze play. It's getting shot out in that direction. Idelia's back here. So it's getting influenced by this trough and a little bit by this ridge. But what happens is, and you'll see it when I go forward here, watch what happens to Franklin moves out. The trough lifts out. Okay. It clearly right here, this, this trough is grabbing it. There's the high. The high is right here. The trough is here. So, so Franklin's going to get picked up. That's that's a slam dunk. But what happens is this trough moves out so quickly that it kind of misses and maybe leaves the remnants of Edelia behind. Okay. But if you look carefully, it's not much of a system. In fact, it 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 you can barely tell it's there, right? So here's the jet stream. The dip is up here. This this ship has sailed, and, and the GFS at least wants to leave it back behind, so it gets left behind. So it's not that it's getting pushed back towards Florida or back towards the coast. It just means the steering currents, there's nothing there. Look at the currents. They're very weak. It's just in a, in a no man's land. If anything, the high is right here, kind of kind of drifting a weak high pressure maybe in here. Um, looks like there might be an upper low here. And then the jet streams like that. I mean, this is <laughs> that's a classic weak steering current setup, honestly. So if we go through time, you see it kind of sitting there, just off the east coast, just kind of waiting. Nothing going on there. A high, a ridge starts building over Texas, and it just drifts out to sea slowly. And then another little dip in the jet stream. This is this is not much. A little a little dip there comes in and looks like it pushes it finally out here, and then. You look long range. This is this is Monday, um, Labor Day. It looks like it's out in here by then. So, what the models are telling you, and we'll go back to this, um, is that the steering currents break down briefly, and we see the system kind of weak, kind of meandering around for a little bit, and then it moves out. So, when you see this, don't get super freaked out. What you're looking at right here, um, and I'll show you the super ensembles because I think they're really useful. Um, We'll go through time kind of shows it moving east and then gets out there notice the spread they all kind of go out look at look at the circle the circle tells you how the spread is getting bigger that's an indication of weak steering currents but honestly this looks like it happens pretty far offshore and i don't anticipate it coming back towards the us um, and even if it did it, it would be a, a shadow of itself it's not going to be anything strong but eventually you know, they all spread out and it's like just mass chaos out there <laughs> into the middle of next week. So again, um, that's a long ways away. We're focused clearly on what's happening right now with the system. There it is. I'll loop. It. I'm going to put on one of the one of the images I like looking at is the sandwich product here because um, you get visible and infrared. So, yeah, look at there's an eye. This is a, this is real time. I'm showing this as I'm recording this. There's clearly an eye wall forming that's pretty strong. It's going to, I think all bets are on, it's going to rapidly intensify. I don't see why it wouldn't. Um, it looks like that's going to happen. So in Florida, you should be evacuated or activating your plans. You need to be acting right now, getting all your precautions done. In the Carolinas, this is going to be less of an issue, big rain event. Um, that's the story for us. In fact, let me show you that rainfall total quickly. All right, let's show you the rainfall totals from this again. Look at some of the rain up in the Carolinas from the front as well. Um, we'll go to day seven. We'll go seven days out and then show you. So the swath of the heaviest rain is going to be, you know, basically right through Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. Charlotte area will be right on the edge. It's not, we're not going to miss out completely on it, but we're definitely going to be on the drier side. But the rainfall has been prolific this week already. We've seen it's, at my house already, I've seen about five inches of rain in the last three days. Um, now, good thing it's been spread out over those three days, but I've seen a ton of rain. So any more rainfall heading our way is going to cause flash flooding, even if it's from the front, which you can see the stalled front. We've got a big cluster of storms there. So in the Carolinas, just a heads up, we are going to see some heavy rain and it may not always be directly associated with the tropical system. Um, I'll show you the, the, the heavy rainfall outlook for today. Let me turn the satellite off here real quickly. You see the heavy rainfall event. We're in the we're, we're in the risk, the medium risk today. 
Um, we will be in the medium risk to low risk and then the high risk along the coast. And then day three is Thursday. It's moving away from us. So it's going to be a soggy couple of days, everybody. Be weather aware for flash flooding. That is going to be our biggest issue over the next couple of days. There's our two systems. I'll move my head out of the way. Just impressive to see both of those off the southeast coast. I will post more updates. This was a long one, but there's a lot to break down, a lot going on. I will post another update this evening and, of course, updates throughout the afternoon and evening on all my social media channels. Please share with whoever you think needs the information. I love getting more followers and questions. I'll try to answer as many as I can.